uh, connecting to the microphones. I guess you have had time to read a very long and hopefully descriptive title of my work. Um, this work is conducted by my uh, PhD student, Bernd Inge Hansen, and I'm uh, presenting this on uh, behalf of him here today because he couldn't uh, travel to Taipei now. Um, our shorter title would be Noisy Bubbles. And um, uh, I will go through our short uh, introduction why we look at bubbles in liquids. Yes, that's quite apparent from listening to all these uh, talks uh, earlier today. And I will also uh, introduce uh, the project that this uh, research is a part of. And then I will uh, take uh, you back uh, almost 100 years and uh, see uh, how Minert uh, analyzed uh, the sounds of bubbles and liquids. Uh, theoretically and experimentally. And then I will uh, uh, talk about the experimental setup before I show the results and conclude finally. So why do we have bubbles in liquids and why is that so interesting? Well, per first of all, it's a very strong acoustic scatterer. So if we uh, send an acoustic signal in water, we will get a very strong reflection from a bubble because of the difference in uh, acoustic impedance. Uh, it has a wide range of applications, as we have seen, in medical application, industrial, NDE, uh, but also maybe gas leak detection uh, for uh, environmental surveillance and even space uh, exploration. On the Mars uh, missions, they listen uh, uh, for uh, bubbles, actually. Um, the project... Uh, is uh, part of um, a, a, a bigger project called Subsea Sensors, which started a few years ago. And uh, our work package is called Ultrasound Gas Leak Detection. Uh, it has now been continued and merged with uh, another work package and is now part of Ultrasound Systems. Um, so uh, to narrow it down, the, the goals here in the beginning is to uh, look at early gas leak detection uh, to see if we can uh, detect when the first bubble appears uh, and long before you get this big explosion where which you can easily find uh, then but then it's too late okay um, so for gas leak uh, detection uh, we have a lot of methods active where you force uh, acoustic response from the bubbles you can use continuous signals, you can use pulses, or you can use frequency sweeps. Uh, or uh, you can use passive methods, such as we do in, uh, in this work. Uh, we will basically just listen to the acoustic signature from a <coughs> bubble seat and try to find out what it sounds like. And it turns out to be a pure tone, uh, like a damped oscillator. And we are interested here to find out how this depends on uh, physical uh, parameters, such as pressure and the type of gas in question. So back in 1933, uh, Marcel Minet published uh, this, his work on musical air bubbles and the sound of running water. What he did was to uh, look at... Uh, where do we have a light? Yeah, here. All the way around. Uh, a bubble here with a rest radius of R, and then it can oscillate between uh, the, the inner and outer uh, radiuses. Uh, when he compared the, kin uh, the um, kinetic, the potential energy of the compressed gas when it is at the minimum with the maximum uh, kinetic energy of the surrounding water when the bubble is back at its resting uh, position. Uh, and for very small uh, deviations from the rest radius, uh, where you have the linear regime, sorry, uh, he found that the oscillation frequency depends on one over radius and square root of the gas constant and square root of the ambient pressure in the water. So, the goals uh, in this experiment was uh, to uh, verify this pressure dependence over a wide range of pressures. Uh, 
And we also want to verify the gas content constant dependence and use this an estimation of the gas constant to discriminate between the gases. So in order to do this, we uh, had uh, uh, an experimental setup looking like this, where we have the, the gas injection here inside of a pressure vessel. We had a hydrophone and a um, a pre-amplifier that had to be inside in order to amplify the signal before sending it through the vessel walls. Uh, listening to the uh, signal acquired by the hydrophone, we could catch the acoustic signature, signature on uh, an oscilloscope. And once we reached a um, threshold in the pressure, we could uh, fire a high-speed camera to uh, take a picture of the bubble as it uh, emerged from the nozzle. So this is a picture of how it looks like, a side view picture. Uh, this is a picture actually taken of the same bubble with the camera open and uh, with several uh, flashes of the, of the flash generate this effect. So how does this look like? This is a, a, a short video of bubbles out of the nozzle and the hydrophone on the right side catching the signature. And here is a closer view and high speed uh, film of what is happening. And it's the initial oscillations that we are trying to capture here, very small ones. So <clears throat> this is the acoustic signature that we measure for each bubble. We could uh, estimate the frequency with uh, quite high uh, accuracy by using several uh, periods. Uh, the bubble size estimation was done by uh, photographic techniques. In the same uh, view as the bubble, we had a reference square. And we could uh, calculate the bubble radius based on this uh, comparison. Uh, we also did a, a, a test with several, uh, more than 1,000 bubbles and collected the total gas volume to verify this uh, uh, method of uh, sizing bubbles. Uh, the pressure reading uh, was done by an instrument and uh, the precision of that was unfortunately 5 kPa, but uh, in this experiment, this is only significant for the lowest pressures. So, and these are the raw results. Uh, we show the, the pressure here and the measured frequency. For all three gases, with helium in blue, uh, nitrogen gas in red, and uh, CO2, carbon dioxide, in black. And from this plot, you see us, it doesn't look very nice. And this is due to the random variations of bubble size in the experiment. So we have to uh, correct for this. So we choose to, uh, to normalize on the bubble radius. It's varying um, a little bit, as we can see here, between the bubbles. But if we um, choose to uh, uh, to normalize and plot the frequency times radius on this axis, and the square root of pressure on this axis. We will see that the data and the uh, theoretical lines uh, align very well. Um, and also we can see that the gas uh, constant gives uh, the difference in slope between the three lines. And the straight line behavior for each of these is due to the square root dependence of the Minear frequency formula here. So we can use this uh, to estimate the gas constant. And uh, we have just uh, calculated the gas constant from the experimental uh, data. And uh, for all the bubbles, we have estimated the mean. And this error bar is uh, ensemble standard deviation, 
which gives some kind of picture on the uncertainty if you do this for one single bubble. However, this is not very useful. We would need to collect more bubbles. And if we do that, we use uh, standard deviation of the mean of the estimator as an error bar. And this is example is shown for uh, if you have 28 bubbles, as, is, as in this case, the, the uh, deviation is much, much smaller, of course. So for uh, tens of bubbles, we can uh, estimate the gas constant with high accuracy. So to sum up, we have been looking into the acoustic properties of bubbles. Uh, the, we have been looking in the linear regime, small bubble uh, radius variations. Uh, we have been experimentally testing the fre Minair frequency expression for pressure dependence and for gas constant dependence. And we can use uh, the estimation of the gas constant to discriminate between the three gases in question. So that sums up my talk. Thank you. Any questions? You know, it's kind of a higher mode for kind of people that it is not a effect. No, we could not, we could uh, maybe see some of them in uh, some of the measurements. But these are very, very low frequency modes. And also, if you have higher order modes, I guess on a, on a certain distance, you, they would cancel out because it yeah, would yeah, be out of phase. <laughs> yeah. More questions? Yeah, well, in this experiment, we. Um, we have plotted uh, a tabulated value that we know because we have very pure gases for this experiment against the estimated value. Uh, so later on, we could uh, try with an unknown gas, basically, and then find the gas constant under these assumptions, of course. Also the density of the gas, yeah. Depends on pressure.